Well, welcome everybody. Uh, good morning. My name is Craig Bartell and I am a solutions engineer with Tableau based in Tampa, Florida. And um, today we're going to be doing our Tableau server kind of 101 for the, we call for the business end user. So the business end user could be somebody that is leveraging existing content, meaning dashboards and other, you know, views of dashboards, or they could be people that have, say, the permissions to be able to develop new content, but they're going to be doing it online in a web browser, as opposed to using our desktop tool called Tableau Desktop, which I'll get into in a second. But anyway, the focus today is really how can you as a business end user leverage Tableau Server uh, for the benefit and gain that analytic insight to your, you know, your, your daily work. Um, just some quick introductions. I think I, I kind of gave mine. Um, Henry is the account executive. He is not on the call today, um, but he, we, we work as a team, Henry uh, and Jason and I. Um, Jason is also the customer success manager for the state uh, account, and Jason is an excellent resource uh, for both enablement and kind of ongoing, you know, usage best practices. Uh, Jason and I work together to make sure that, you know, that the product is being used and if questions happen and what's the best way to do this and that and roll it out and, and so on. So I, I guess I'll make this statement at the beginning. I encourage you if you're not currently or your agency is not currently using Tableau, Please get a hold of us. Um, would love to just kind of sit down, talk through some use cases, talk through things that are, you know, analytic use cases you deal with on a daily basis. Maybe you're using another business intelligence tool for it today, but um, you know, would love to show you how Tableau could really take advantage of that. So um, the agenda today, really, just a couple slides, not not very much. I'm just gonna, I'm really gonna be jumping into hands-on with the product. Um, this is a long kind of laundry list of what we're going to be doing, but net net is, is we're going to be kind of walking through the different roles that one could have all the way from being a, what we call a content creator to just a viewer. So somebody who just typically interacts with content, they really are not going to edit it, develop their own, et cetera, because there's kind of all ranges of user types. Um, and then we're going to be talking through how do we navigate through Tableau Server. Um, we're going to we're going to kind of go through different roles. I'll log off and log on as different roles, and we'll be able to see what those roles look like and what they can do, and and uh, all those fun things. And then we'll ha hopefully have a little time at the end. If you do have questions along the way, go ahead and put them. I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, chat window here just so I can see. Um, just put it in the chat window, and if if I can, and it makes sense in the middle of our presentation, I'll I'll address it. If not, we can address it towards the end. And if we don't get it addressed today, you know, absolutely, please get a hold of myself and or Kim, and or Jason to uh, kind of you know go through the questions. So, okay, just a little bit of kind of lay of the land here. Um, when we talk about analytics in any organization, there's really kind of some major steps that have to happen, right? And if you kind of look at here on our left, we have these different sources of data, right? Sources of data could be traditional uh, relational databases. They could be uh, they could be Excel, CSVs sitting on our desktops. They could be maps that, you know, are sitting in our, our ArcGIS server or from our GIS team, um, et cetera. They, they could be metrics coming out of some you know, metric system that's tracking the health of our internal systems. But before we we typically are going to do analytics, we we generally run into this issue of having to cleanse and prepare the data, right? You find that you have the wrong data, it's not aggregated at the right level, you need to bring in some other data sources to get a full complete view of the situation. And that's typically called extract load transform um, and and there, are, there are many tools that do this. We actually have a tool in our, in our portfolio called Prep Builder. Um, we do a separate session on Prep Builder, and I highly recommend that you, you listen to that. Um, I, we do this, this typically every two to three weeks, you know, the cycle of presentations. So um, it's a great tool to help you prepare your data. And the thing I like about it is that it allows you to 
visualize your data as you're transforming it. So you're not just simply working with scripts and you know trying to filter and group records in Excel and things like that, right? This actually lets you look at things at a high level, which is great. You'll also notice in this diagram that there's some blue and also kind of amber colored lines. And, and this is where the overlap typically happens, kind of right in here where we typically have to rely on our technical teams, you know, people that are DBAs and know SQL and know how to write scripts and all that kind of fun stuff to get the data that we need to do our analysis. And what we are doing really as a mission with Tableau is trying to expedite getting from here on the left over to here on the right with visualization, right? We provide you end user focused tools that enable you to prepare the data and then visualize it, right? So you don't have to be a programmer or an Excel wizard or a Python wizard or anything like that. And then the most important step right here, visualization and analysis, which we'll obviously be <clears throat> spending a lot of time on and gives us the ability for us as an end user, not again to have to rely on a report factory to do that. And then finally, once we have those insights, we can collaborate with our teams, management, you know, external constituents on what we've found, right? And um, we'll show you some examples of that as well. And then there's kind of a feedback loop, right? Because once we, we, there's always that next question. And this is one of the things about Tableau that people, um, say, you know, that's so good about it, right? Because again, you as the end user have the power to answer that next question or ask the next question and then use an analytics tool that's really end user focused. It's not something you have to be a, you know, a BI tech wizard to know how to do. So what we're trying to do, I think that the main message here is, is that we've got some things that will help you. We've got prep, we've got desktop and we've got server. Those are really three tools that we have. It's a very simple platform. It's not a whole hodgepodge of different components that you need to have here and there and in the cloud and you know all that kind of stuff. So that's how it looks. If you map it out to our, our actual products, kind of overlaying that diagram, you'll see that you start on the left with our data sources, you have Tableau Prep. This is kind of what it looks like. It's a very small screenshot, but it's a very cool tool to be able to visualize. Then we use Tableau Desktop. Again, we have a separate 101 that we do on Tableau Desktop. And then we publish that content into either Tableau Online or Tableau Server. This is actually renamed and called Tableau Cloud. I keep forgetting to up, update that slide. But the thing about these two are, focus over here on Tableau Server. Today, DIT actually has a Tableau Server stood up for use by all agencies. So this is something that if you're interested, we can hook you up with Kim and team to be able to, you know, start getting going with it. Um, and then really it's a simple platform. So it's these three simple tools. So I'm gonna keep rolling here. Now you'll hear me talk about these three different roles. So, and I'll, I'll try to simplify it. You can read through these underlying little bullet points for each, but net net is as you start at the left, a creator role is kind of the, the wide open role that allows you to, first of all, download a copy of Tableau Desktop, download a copy of Tableau Prep, um, and be able to create connected data, create new content, and publish it into Tableau Server, or even just remain in the desktop. You can do your analysis in the desktop. An Explorer user is one that only has access to the Tableau Server version of Tableau. So in other words, you're gonna log in through a browser now you can do a certain amount of new content creation, but what you can't do, and this is the biggest difference between creators and explorers, is you cannot upload data. So it, it has to be an existing data set that a creator has put out onto Tableau server. You can create new dashboards, but they have to be on certified data sources already. And we can talk about what is a certified data source. It's another, another concept where when you're doing all this work with analytics, it makes logical sense to publish your analytic data sets into Tableau Server so you have a certified copy of your data. And that data can be refreshed and made available to other users online. If you go all the way to the right, you'll see a viewer. A viewer is just that. They interact with existing content. They do not edit, they do not upload data, but what they can do is a lot of the interactive, they can filter, they can drill down, they can, you know, they can export, they can do all those fun things 
but they're a viewer, right? They're not a content creator. So you can kind of envision who in your organization would have each one of these roles. So starting with kind of the power analyst on the left, moving to a kind of a midstream analyst, really, and I, like I said, the only difference between a creator and explorer is that an explorer uses it via the web and also they can publish data sets. So um, with that, I'm gonna roll into, uh, we already talked about prep builders, so I'm not gonna spend time with that. Tableau Desktop, that's, that's the tool that we use to develop our insights. Again, highly encourage that you, you attend our desktop 101 sessions, which uh, we can put you, we can get you the dates of those coming up. Like I said, we do those on kind of recurring cycle. Tableau server, we'll be seeing a lot of that today. Uh, and then here we go. So we're gonna, we're gonna jump in and uh, let me first start. So now I am, I am actually on the desktop, but I will be on the desktop for a very brief amount of time because what I'm gonna do I've already created this visualization, right? This, this is something that uh, we, uh, it's an example, it's not live data. Um, and it's just showing, you know, the number of, of alleged um, uh, uh, cases for child welfare issues across the state. And like any other dashboard, it has the ability, you know, it's taking advantage of these nice features, hover over to Viz and Tooltip, you know, we can drill down and filter down to a particular county. You know, we could do the same thing over here. We wanted to focus in on the eight to 11 age group. We wanna only focus on those that have been contacted within uh, 24 hours, et cetera, right? So we can do our analysis here as kind of that, uh, that viewer user, um, but somebody had to create this, that creator user had to create this. And so with that, um, we're gonna kind of end the, the creator role right now. And we're going to go ahead and and this is really the first step is they would come in here, they would sign in to a server. And in this case, I'm logged into Tableau Online or what's called Tableau Cloud now. But for, it, for all practical purposes, it looks identical. It's just that we manage it in the cloud, um, whereas yours is managed by your IT group uh, and they have it sitting on some VMs out there somewhere. Okay, so the next thing that I would do, I wanna call your attention to, and actually give me one second, this is my Always, I forget to start up my little pointer, pointer gadget here, there. So up here on this menu, you see that I have two options. I have this publish workbook and publish data source. So the workbook is the collection of all of these visualizations that have come together on this dashboard. So it's a collection of the visualizations and the dashboard. So when I publish this, it'll be available on server for anybody that has permissions to access it. Notice over here that I also have this option called publish data source. Publish data source will give me the ability to publish what data source is sitting behind this dashboard. And again, this is another great way to share all the great work that you've done on creating an analytic data source. So when I publish a workbook, I'll just kind of walk through how that looks. I will, I will get this dialog box where I have to specify some things. So keep in mind, I'm now a publisher of content. So I'm a creator, I'm a publisher, and I, I now have to decide where am I gonna put it, right? So on server, I've got all these different folders. Think of them as projects. They could be like your HR, they could be your operations folder, they could be your finance folder. You could have a test folder, a prod folder, but net net is they're a, they're a nested set of folders where I wanna put my content. Now you have to have permissions, it's a secure environment. So there's kind of an overarching discussion here uh, about having permissions by folder, by content type, and all of that, which we really won't get into today, but just understand if you're concerned about well, what, what happens when I publish this, yeah, no no issues, it's all secure. You can de determine who has, um, and a, a good question here, for publishing a data source, does the version of desktop have to match the version? It does not, however, we recommend that you do keep the same version, and here's why, because if you try to publish something with a later version of desktop to an earlier version of server, what's gonna happen is, is any of the new features you've tried to use in desktop will not work in server. It will warn you that, but it will not allow you to use it in, in server. So net net is yes, you can, but we, we've tried our best to advise our customers to keep their, their desktops at the same version, at same or less than, than what server is at. That's just kind of a best practice. 
Okay. So we're going to give this a name. I will call this, uh, I'll call this the child welfare analysis demo workbook NC webinar. I could put a little description. I could add tags. And now I can also specify which of the dashboards or, or individual worksheets I want to be published. And I'm just going to say, publish this, this top one here, child welfare analytics. And then <clears throat> some things about permissions. Here's where I can now define who's going to have access to what. So as the publisher, you have kind of the first rights to see who is going to have access to your content. Now that will still be overridden by, first of all, their role, whether they're creator, viewer, or explorer, but then also by permission sets. So for example, if you are in, say, the, the all agencies group, you're going to have you know, one set of permissions. If you're in the East region group, you're going to have one set. If you're in the technology product division, you're going to have, you know, that or workshop you. So there's all sorts of delineations you can have. You can have permissions overarching all of them. And this is kind of the permission sets that you see, like, can they view, can they filter, can they add comments, can they run, can they download, can they web edit, you know, all these things. So that you can then have very specific control over, like you don't want somebody to have the ability to web app edit that, so you just deny it, right? And that that's for the technology product people, we're gonna, we're gonna set that permission. So that's how that works. And then there's data sources. When you publish them, you can decide how you want to publish them, whether you want them to be embedded in the workbook itself, or you want it to publish it separately. It's kind of a final stage ability to be able to publish that data source by itself. Um, we're just going to leave this set as is, and then you click the publish button. Now I'm actually, I've already got multiple copies of this, so I'm not going to do it, but what you're going to see is once I publish that, I'm going to hop over here to my web browser window and get over here. And you'll see that I will be positioned now into Tableau server. And once I publish actually what happened, let's, let's just, stop. Uh, Find I'm actually searching now. I'm in a in a web browser, and I am looking for here. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let, let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and kind of find it here through the example of navigation, right? So now you see I'm at the home page of of Tableau server essentially, right? We've got different views. We've got our favorites, right? These are what are called metric tiles. Metric tiles are a new feature we introduced about a year or two ago that allow us to put kind of key metrics into a little key metric tile, and then I could combine them later, you know, into a mobile sort of a little application, or I could combine them into a dashboard, et cetera. Now you see, I've got recently accessed dashboards. I've got those dashboards or, and data sets that have been shared with me. I've got some recommended ones. We actually have some, some algorithms that we can surface like content where where it suggests you know sorts of things that you might have have access to uh and so on so you know this is kind of the home view of our of our content um let's now talk a little bit about the navigation we'll, we'll get back to our dashboard in just a second because we know we stuck it into a folder so now as the user right my user is logged in as Chris creator. That is, I'm a creator role. I only have the ability to see these three folders. I can see my project. So I'm user 100, also known as Chris creator. And you see, it says here, project folder for Chris creator. Um, and I have a government example content folder, which is accessible to all the users in the system. And then I've got a data sources folder that is accessible to those that, you know, I've given access to. So if we were to dive into this folder, user 100 project, um, you see that I've got some content in here. Um, th there's also another subfolder here called test content. If I drill into that, you see here is my dashboard, okay? And if I were to click into it, boom, I get the individual component pieces of that dashboard. And then if I click one step further, I'll actually get the dashboard itself. So here's the dashboard. And you know, I could I could interact with it. It's gonna it's gonna operate exactly like I did earlier by drilling down, you know, etc. And I will get into some of the you know on screen capabilities uh, in just a second. So, um, let's see here. Um, 
I'm just covering my list here to make sure that, uh, you know, we have. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the content ownership side of this, right? I'm actually the owner of this workbook. So I, again, have the ability to set the initial permissions for it. Um, and of course, it can be overridden by th those admins in the organization that can set, you know, who can have, who can have access to what. Um, let's actually kind of take a, take a look through, uh, I'm gonna go back up to the highest level here and you can see on the upper left hand side, well, let, let me start over here. There, there are kind of different types of objects that we have in the system. We've got these projects, which are these folders. We've got workbooks, which is our content. We've got views, which are specific kind of views of the workbooks. In other words, like one of the tabs in my workbook might be one view, but they're all condensed into a workbook. Then I've got those metric tiles. I've got what are called ask data lenses. We'll get into ask data. Ask data is a neat tool that allows, once I've published a data source, I can kind of ask natural language questions about the data without even having to use the building tool to build a, an interface. I literally just start asking questions, you know, show me how many allegations I had in county whatever, and it will paint a visualization for me. So I'll show you that a little bit later. Data sources, we can see the data sources. Flows are for our prep builder flows. Those were those data preparation flows. We can publish them into Tableau server. Not gonna really cover that today. And then that's pretty much the main things. Main things we need to worry about are data sources and workbooks. So, like I said, if I, you know, drill into the government example content folder, you see I've got a lot of different workbooks uh, I could look at. I could look at a highway safety dashboard. I could look at a, you know, city of Jacksonville case analysis thing, you know, Colorado health indicators. These are all the ones that I've stored in the government example content folder. Different ways of kind of slicing the content. I have my home view, which we've kind of talked through, right? It shows my favorites, recents, shared recommendations. I've got this category called favorites, where I've chosen to put my metric tiles. I've got my recently accessed content, which just again, shows me what I've recently accessed as a user. Those shared with me. So Craig Bartell, who's actually a different user in this case, I'm not, I'm playing Chris Creator right now, but Craig Bartell shared with me this data extract. So this is a data source that I can now use to build some sort of visualization if I have the rights to do it, which in this case I do. but. And then we have recommendations, which are the algorithm that's saying both these are, are views that have been looked at by people with viewing habits similar to yours. What those are, I couldn't begin to tell you. They're kind of algorithms behind the scene. But apparently it thinks that I would love to look at this fire call incident analysis dashboard. Let's just take a quick look at that. And um, I think it's actually one that I created. So that's cool. It's got a lot of fire incidents and maps and all that sort of stuff. So that's kind of a cool one. So anyway, uh, we'll come back here. Um, collections, or sorry, we've got lots of different ways of storing, you know, or organizing our data. We've got our recommendations, we've got personal spaces. So a personal space is kind of like my and mine only. This I can put stuff in here and nobody else can use it. It's mine, right? I could share it, but this is mine. If I wanna just put stuff here, I can put it here and nobody else can have access to it. Collections are kind of other user defined collections. So once you get out of kind of the project folder sort of structure, you may just wanna have a named collection, right? A named collection of like, these are all our COVID dashboards or these are all our, I don't know, traffic incident dashboards, right? I can put them in a collection. Uh, and then there's the general explore option here which allows me to just kind of go wherever I want to go or come up here to the search window. Like, let's say that I want to see everything that Chris Creator, you know, everything that's owned by Chris Creator, right? So I can get a list that way. Or maybe I want to go uh, back and let's search for all, um, uh, let's see here, what could we search for? Um, all child welfare related content. I could spell. So it's going to surface for me not only data sources, but also here I could filter down to just the workbooks. And now I see all the workbooks that are child welfare workbooks, right? So there's great ways 
you know, this is one aspect of server in the five years I've been here that's really gotten great is the ability to find and categorize content. Okay, so now, um, before I jump out of being a creator role, let's just kind of, um, I want to, I want to point, I'm going to spend more time as an explorer exploring that dashboard. But in this case, I want to want to highlight one differentiator that only a creator user can do, and this is it. So, if I want to create a new uh, published data source, right? Actually, hold on a second. Let me let me create a new workbook. So, as I create a new workbook, remember I said only a creator can upload data. So, the very first thing when you create a workbook is it needs to know what data you're going to build it from, right? Right here. It says connect to data. You see on this site, meaning it's already a published data source, and then these remaining three files, connectors, and accelerators. So let's say that I had a connector that I wanted to connect to, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, right? Or I don't know, Amazon Athena, or whatever it is. Right? I can pick the driver. I can find that. That uh, let's find. Let's pick Microsoft SQL. I can give it a server name, and I could connect to the data, right? No other user can do exactly this. They cannot connect and upload data because it's not in their role, right? An explorer can just use existing data sources. So that's a big thing to point out here. So you see that, um, oh shoot, let's do data, new, new data source. So remember this, you see on this site is the only thing that the explorer user is going to see. And I'll point that out in just a second. Okay, so now let's go ahead and I'm going to log out of being Chris Creator. I'm going to log on as, take just a second. This is going to be our <clears throat> Dora the Explorer, so otherwise known as Tableau Workshop User 101. And when I enter her credentials, I'm signing in now. So now I'm going to get a different view. This is what you see Dora. I see this DE over here. This is saying that Dora the Explorer is the user. And they may have, you know, maybe not the same options over here on the left hand side, depending on what they've been given permissions to. But you see, if I click on the Explorer, now they have access to the user 101 project, not the one that Chris Creator had. This is their own user project. And keep in mind, I've just decided that I wanted to give every user their own project folder. You may not, you may just have a working folder, et cetera. Okay, so um, let's find some content there. Let's search for our child welfare. Uh, Let's um. Let's find that dashboard. All right, this this looks like it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click into it. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about exploring content. So here's our good old dashboard that we had. It was saved with this selected. Incidentally, you see that eight to eleven has been actually uh, pre-selected once I had published this dashboard. That was probably a misnomer or a mistake on my part. But nonetheless, just I happened to pick that up as I was doing this. So just as you're kind of as you're checking things. So now as I'm interacting, again, I'm not going to spend time talking about how we interact with it, but you know, you'd have the interactive capabilities, drill down, hover over, um, you know, you want to look at 2016 only, you know, you click on 2016, the data changes, all that fun stuff. So now what can I do with this dashboard? So there's some some interesting things that I might want to do, like First of all, set up subscriptions. So if I click on subscriptions, this is gonna say who has access to this particular uh, piece of content. Now, the only way to subscribe others to a piece of content if you are the content creator. So I am not the content creator of this, so I can just subscribe myself. I can't subscribe anybody else. So in this case, I'm saying subscribe myself to this view in, and this, this what this is basically saying here is that when it sends me an email saying that you've been added or subscribed to this view, show me the view tile as an image or a PDF or an image and PDF. Now, 
you'll still get a link to this actual viz or visualization, but you'd, you'd then it open it up in Tableau server. This just some kind of is a way to get kind of a little visual into your email or whatever to show you what the, the content is. And then you can say, okay, I would like to subscribe to it either on a selected schedule, i.e. like whatever the schedule is, like um, every day at five o'clock, every morning at nine, or I can have it whenever the data refreshes. So uh, when the data refreshes, I just wanna be notified, right? So I get the latest, uh, latest data. Um, yeah, I have a question here. Uh, is there a way for us to know what fonts have been installed on Tableau server? Um, yeah, fonts is an interesting situation because two things you have to be aware of. One, what you have on your desktop and B, what you have on server. <laughs> because I've had situations where somebody used a custom font, they published the content and now the server is what's rendering it. So you have to, we can kind of talk, talk about that as a sidebar, but um, yes, and this whole idea of branding is something that's very important, right? Because when you create a piece of content, and I'll show you some state level content a little later, you want to be able to, you know, follow all your state state standards for branding and colors and fonts and shapes and sizes and all that stuff. So good question. Okay, so once I've subscribed to this stuff, I can go ahead and click the button to subscribe and then I'll get the regular email, which will notify me that I can click on it, open up this visualization and be good to go. So that's scheduling. Metrics, if I wanted to create a metric tile, let's say that I was like, you know what, this is a really good graph. I would like to highlight that and actually come in here and create a metric tile based off of that. So when I click this point right here, actually I have to create this, do this little create option here. And, oh, it says, I don't have permissions to download the full data for this view. So um, looks like it's not gonna let me create a metric. Didn't realize that. But anyway, there's security for you. So that's how I would have created these metric tiles that, that I showed you earlier. You can actually come in and select a particular data point and, and do that. Alerts. So when you wanna be notified of an alert, when a, when a data threshold's been breached at the time your data is refreshed, so let's say that I wanted to be notified whenever we cross the 1.5,000 1, 1. number of allegations as it's shown in this visualization. So if I click that and create, and I just pick 1.5 here, and I say create the view, you'll see it's gonna create an alert where if the number of allegations is above equal to 1,600, and I can change that, um, then what do you want me to do? At daily or hourly, you know, notify, and then I could say, um, notify um, Joe 11. Okay, and then create an alert, right? Joe 11, these are just fictitious users that I have in my demo system here. Then I create an alert. Now every day, hourly, if that threshold is checked and breached, they will get a little text showing this information that this has been breached. So you have a very proactive way of using your content, not only just to get it in front of people, but actually to trigger proactive situations should you need to be able to do that. Okay, um, you can have what are called comments. So you can have a running thread of what's going on. So in this case, Chris Creator came in and asked uh, Dora, I see that the age to 11 age group has a higher number of allegations. Can you do some further analysis? And then Chris put another comment here and then Dora Explorer came in and did something. I, I didn't have a complete message here, but you see how this little view button is set? They, when they get notified of this, they will actually get this little metric tile. And when they click the view button, it will actually show them the actual selections they've made on that dashboard, which highlight what they're talking about. So it's a very pertinent, up-to-date way of sharing information about the visualization. So I uh, wanted to point that out. It's a great collaboration tool built within the product. There's download options. And again, download options, you could download this as image, data, cross-tab, PDF, PowerPoint. But note that <clears throat> unless you're downloading a workbook, you're not gonna get live access to data. So in other words, let's say for example, you don't want people to have the ability to download data because it's sensitive data right? So you would disable the ability for them to download data, cross tabs, PDFs, or whatever. But a PowerPoint 
rendering of this dashboard will be static. It's not going to be dynamic like when I'm clicking on things, just so you understand that. Um, now, one last thing I'm going to point out here is this ability to do editing. So as an explorer now, I have the ability to edit, meaning I can go into that same mode I was in, like in desktop, and I could go ahead and, for example, I'm going to just kind of uh, create something from scratch here. Let's say that we want to uh, create a new, um, uh, let's see here, allegations by, uh, let's see here, by allegation, relationship by, you see how it's, it's blank. And again, we'll cover this more in the 101. But let's see, I want to know, uh, I don't know, the, the allegations by um, the number of allegations. I find that field here and I double click it. And then I say, oh, you know what? I would like to see that broken out by uh, the allegation description. I can open this up a little bit. So now I'm, I'm, I am Explorer, right? So I want to see that. And I'm going to, um, I'm just doing this really quickly to kind of give you an idea. And I'm going to sort by the uh, some number of allegations. So we see that neglect, sexual abuse, physical abuse, but now I'd also like to um, maybe break this up or colorize it by the um, allegation or, or the relationship, right? So let's maybe colorize that by relationship type. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So you see now I'm breaking out the allegation description by uh, this. And, and this is maybe a quick little view that I want to show and, and, you know, bring up in my, in my, in my dashboard. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to go <clears throat> add that relationship allegation right in here where we see it down here and boom. Now I've made a change to this dashboard. Now I probably want to have some rules in place so that I don't overwrite what the original publisher of this did. So when I say publish, I only have the ability to see here to publish to my folder. I am not able to publish back to this government example folder. I only have the ability to publish into my own folder. Thus, I am protecting the original content. Okay, so that would be one, one example here of, of how this might work. The other thing that's really cool that you can take advantage of, and this is just more of a feature function thing. Let's say that I'm on this, this metric here. We, we have this little pop-up called explain data. So remember, you've got all the data behind this dashboard sitting in this workbook or, or, you know, punching out to the data source to get it. Wouldn't it be nice if we could run some kind of statistical algorithms behind it to look at the relationship between our dimensions and our measures and see if there's anything we haven't considered here. So what it's going on in the background is it's now actually doing some running models and it's going to surface for me any findings that it has. Now, this isn't an extremely robust data set, but I just want to kind of show you how it works. And I'll take a sip of coffee as this is rolling here. And it's taking its sweet time, so I'm not sure why. Maybe it's a big data set. And if it goes on any longer, I'll kind of probably want to bag this, but Maybe our server's a little overwhelmed right now. Okay, and well, I'll just mention a couple things while this is this is redisplaying. Right as I'm when I'm done with this, what I'm going to show you is, oh, service is unavailable. Well, that's that's new. <laughs> okay, well we'll we'll cover that another time, or I'll show you it on the actually no, you I can do this. I'll show you on the desktop that feature because it's the same exact feature. So I was sitting on this element right here, and I clicked the explain data box. What it's doing now is it's, it's saying, oh, we found that, first of all, the number of allegations is higher than expected for this viz. Well, yeah, that, that does make sense. But it's now going to kind of split some hairs here and look at contributing factors for that. Um, and we'll just see here what it comes up with. And it will present those to me in in vizs or separate visualizations that I can then go down another path and start doing further analysis with. This, this isn't actually, I think there's a couple hundred thousand rows in this data set. So 
All right, here it is. So you see, we've got contributing single values. You know, this is a multi-state database, so I'm, I'm going to kind of ignore that. Um, but we see down here that uh, in the measures, I've got uh, an alleged detail code. So we can see that what it's doing is it's it's creating a new viz here, this average of the detail code and the number of allegations shows me that in this age group, we're standing out. That's interesting. Okay, I can take that one step level. Now I see another chart that it just drew for me based on this finding. And now we can start just doing other you know, analysis. I said, oh, uh, I don't know, maybe we want to split it by gender, right? So let's, or age group, right? I wanna see uh, by age group what that looks like. Um, so we split out, you know, the individual ones. That's probably a bad example because I, I, I'm not, I don't have a real good, let me see here. Um, uh, state, time, victim, geography. I guess I could do county. Yeah, there we go. So now it's breaking it out by county so I can get a county level view. So again, the whole point here is it's giving me some other things to look at that I might that might or might not be things I need to, to, to go into further details with. That is available on server. So I, that's why I wanted to, to show you that because as, as an explorer or a creator user, you have the ability to edit and you have the ability to then use explain data. So, okay, with that in mind, I'm gonna go back over here. Um, and let's see here. Now, before I go as a, before I change to being a viewer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create, so I'm going to, I'm going to close this edit session down, not publish anything. And I'm going to try to create a new workbook based off, you see now some other things are great, are grayed out, right? Like I can't create a new project. I can't create a new flow, right? I can upload a workbook, but I can't upload data and a, and a, and a such. Um, so if I try to create a new workbook, Remember, as a creator user, it would allow me to connect to not only data on the site, but also connections, local files, and such. You see, now I only have the ability to pick the, the data from, if I search down on child welfare data, you know, I, could, I could pick this one, but it already exists in server because it's an existing server data source. So I wanted to point that out, right, as an Explorer user, uh, you do not have the ability to update data or to upload data, right? You can you can create a dashboard to your heart's content based on other data, but again, it's kind of one of those models that we put in place just because there's got to be some level of kind of control here. Um, okay, then let's log out. Let's go ahead and log out of Being Dora Explorer, and we'll log in as Victor the viewer. So we're gonna now do our Tableau. Hold on a second. Uh, that would be user 102. And when they log in, they will be asked their password. And so what you'll see is a very similar user experience only now they're gonna have certain limitations, right? Like if they were at that main menu and they tried to create a new, see all this stuff is grayed out, right? They can't do a new project, they can't do a new workbook. But what they can do is they can edit, they can bring up new content, right? I'm sorry, they can they can bring up a dashboard. Like I'm just gonna bring up this one right here. This is a case analysis dashboard, something different. So um, I think I did this as part of a POC for city of Jacksonville. 311, right? So you see, uh, we can look at all the cases going on here in this zip code, and then we could drill into ones that are high priority uh, animal cases. And then we can zoom into, you know, maybe ones that we want to see right in this area. Boom, you know, that's the type of drilling you're going to be able to do, you know, with the tools to, um, to get that level of detail. So, um, so there you go. So so now as a a viewer, um, I have the availability of interacting with my content. Um, I do not have the ability. You see, alerts is missing here. So I do not have the ability to to set up alerts. I can though subscribe myself 
to things that I have access to. So I can create a new subscription. I can create my own metric tile. I can even do uh, comments. I have the ability to do comments. Uh, I can download to a certain extent things here, but you see, I can't download. I don't have the workbook option because I don't have the permissions to do that, right? Because that's how maybe it has protected data in it. Um, and then, um, okay, yeah. So, so remember, a viewer is mainly interacting with our content, right? That's the whole point of being able to, uh, hold on, let me just reset this. There's our dashboard. Okay, now, what else can a viewer do? One key thing that we we created was this, this capability called Ask Data. And Ask Data allows the end user to find a data set. In this case, let's find a data set based on uh, that child welfare data. And let's say that I really don't have the desire or the skills to be able to um, do analysis of, of content, right? So in this case, I found there's what's called a data lens. A lens is kind of think of it as a view into the data. So I've not only got a data source, but I've created for my users the ability for them to access it in a certain way. So I've hidden some fields. I've maybe made some fields, you know, renamed some fields so that they're more user friendly. And when I click this, I get, even though this is Florida data, just work with me here. It's the same exact data just in Florida. So I will get this little window showing me that I have now the ability to ask questions about any of these data points that I have been using, right? You see, as I hover over these fields, um, it shows me a distribution of the data. It shows me what the valid values are. But let's say that I wanted to know the uh, what is the number of allegations. So it's helping me by prompting me number of allegations by county. And then I just simply go click enter. And I get, whoa, look at that, I got a map. <laughs> so it's a real quick and easy way. And now I've created a sheet here that I can now store. I could say, let's just save this, right? Let's just, just go and share it with others, right? We click the share button. And now I can go ahead and save this for later, you know, create, creation of a dashboard. Let's just create another one right here. Uh, let's say that I wanna know what the number uh, of allegations are by um, what is our um, by our report date month and I click see I mean it's helping me along the way and now it gets so it's helping me also determine what type of a chart would make the most sense for what I'm showing here also I could maybe go back and maybe show it as a tree map that's kind of a not not a great way to do it but um, let's just keep with the line chart, or maybe I want a bar chart. Um, there you go. So maybe I want to take it one step further and say, okay, I would like to also now um, add, uh, let's see here, color by um, relationship description. Because now it's going to hopefully segment out and see now it's breaking out by color the relationship to show me which of the relationships. So I didn't have to know anything about where to drag a field. All I did is start typing in here, you know, and, and saying, what is the total number of blank by this? Or what by month is that? But, you know, and you see now I've created two visualizations that I can turn around and share with others in my organization. Okay. So um, let, let me just double check. Oh, so the, so. Hopefully that gave you a quick tour of the different types of roles and what they can do with Tableau server content. Um, just wanted to show you one last thing here based off of um, some examples of embedding content. So let's say, for example, I've got these beautiful dashboards that we've been looking at. You know, I've got this one. I don't know, I'll just bring up this one here. But now I want to embed them into a website or a portal. 
Well, it's very easy. All you have to do is, I'm gonna bring up one here. You see this little share button over here? I can share either the link to the content, which will, it'll put it directly open up a browser. And if the user is a licensed user, it will show this dashboard, or I can copy the embed code. Now embed code is the script that I need to drop into like an iframe or a portal page. And what you'll end up with is something like this. I'll just show you, this is an example. So in South Carolina, they built this dashboard called Accelerate SC. Now this right here is a Tableau dashboard, but it's embedded into their website, all right? See, so when they, when they pick uh, business, they'll get a different set of tiles. This is all bit one huge workbook that has data. We did this about a year ago during COVID. They wanted to kind of, you know, do KPIs that show across a number of the different areas of the state, education, business, economy, social impact. Actually in North Carolina, you have a beautiful dashboard here at uh, the COVID-19 site. You scroll down, you see now, now this area of the screen is a Tableau dashboard, right? So these are Tableau dashboards, you'd never know it, but what they have, I hover over, you see those little, little tool tips. There's no little, little logo down here that says this is a Tableau dashboard, but this is actually embedded into your website. So um, anyway, just wanted to point out that kind of the extent of going from all the way from creation of content all the way to deploying it and putting it into a, a dashboard environment uh, gives you that ability. So with that, I'm just gonna pop back over to the, the last kind of slides set here. And actually this is a little outdated, so I'll just leave it on this one. Um, yeah, so let me, let me open it up to questions. Who has a question? I hear one coming in here. I work with budget and expenditure data from school districts. Just do multiple grants. Each grant has a budget, multiple rows. We also have expenditures report on monthly. So we use the other that spent. Are there any tutorials on it? Thank you. Um, uh, let's see. Um, you know, when you're working with budget and expenditure data, a lot of times people want to see it in rows and columns. You know, um, yeah, there's there's different ways you could do it. Um, it when you when you start getting into a lot of you know nitpicky sort of column you know slice and dice stuff, it can get a little tricky, but it can certainly be done. Um, I can probably I'll, I'll get your email there, Troy, and send you some links that have kind of more more uh, more cross tab oriented type stuff. Now, having said that. My view on things is always you want to get people away from cross tabs and put things in more visual sorts of things like bar charts and overlaying bar charts and dual axis and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, um, but, but a lot of times that just, you know, I know people, the end users like, no, nope, I need to see it in my columns and rows. Um, so, and I will say though, that you do kind of have to have some experience with Tableau to, to be able to you know, get to that level of expertise to do that kind of stuff. Not a, not a ton, but yeah, I'll, I'll get your email and try to find, dig up some stuff that's more germane to that. Go ahead and copy your email address. Anything else, any other comments? Don't be bashful. Hey, Craig. Hey. Hey, this is Asel. I have a question. So when on your server or where you're exploring things, I saw that you could actually see different dashboards, right? Or is it something that you already have? You know, you said it's kind of like AI generated, right? Or how, like, how can I have that um, turn on on my server? I don't have that. Um, yeah, let's, let's, so um, now, now, let me first, so I had a folder where I had lots of different dashboards. So, I, so first of all, we had published a bunch in and I just kind of populated them into a place, right? So you, you'd set up a folder that had access for multiple people to get to it, right? Um, does, does that make sense or am I missing the- Yeah, so it's kind of like your library then, right? Right, right. And so think, first of all, think of, 
think of the server as just a bunch of folder projects starting at the highest level you know you have these top level folders and then you you could drill into one like you could drill into this folder and there's another subfolder so the, you, and you, in most typical organizations you're going to have very deep you know you're going to start a one that says you know hr production and then you drill into that and you're going to have uh, you know, database folder, or sorry, data source folder and a working folder. And then you've subdivide that into areas of working area. Like, um, I don't know, maybe you have people working on budget and then you have people working on uh, expenditures or, you know, so there's, there's a whole kind of, um, you know, set up process and, and design process of just setting up your whole organization structure. Then you might have, you know, a shared folder like this one where it's just demo content, right? Or, or example dashboards. I'm a demo guy, so I have a you know, folder with a lot of demos in it. But then you also have, remember we have like the shared with me, you have recommendations, you have collections. You could have a collections folder where you start a new collection and you add you know, type of content you know, here to this collection. So that's another way to do it. So you know, there, there's so many different ways to share content. Thank you. That's very mm -hmm. helpful. Okay, we got like two more minutes here. Any any last minute questions? Okay, well, now again, if you have any further questions, again, either myself, I'll put put uh, ours back on the screen here. Um, we've got uh, Henry. Henry is the account exec. Lives in Raleigh. Um, I am the lead solutions engineer. I live in Tampa, but I, well, haven't recently, but uh, I used to be up in Raleigh like every, at least once a month. Um, Jason is in DC and he is the customer success manager. He was just in Raleigh. But we, we, we honestly, we love engaging with you guys, just talking through use cases. If you just want to get us on the phone and say, hey, I, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, maybe you could shoot me a little bit of data and I could kind of help you uh, or work through an example, you know, happy to do that. Cause my goal is to just get you using the product and keep you using the product. So, um, that's my role in life. And, uh, yeah, so I'm really excited. I think we've got a lot of users at the agency that, that use it. Um, ta again, Tableau is all about end user empowerment of analytics. Uh, I know there are other business intelligence tools out there. Um, Sometimes your agency is like, oh, we've standard on power, we've standardized on Power BI. Boom, you know. And, and I would just encourage you to, to have an open mind because, you know, I, I think that our tool is really designed for the end user, not just for people to crank out dashboards. You know, you have to be a more trained user in those sorts of environments. So, anyway, I could go on and on, but um, I'm glad you could join today. And please, if you guys have any further questions, get a hold of us. Would love to talk to you further. So with that, I will go ahead and end the call. So all have a great week and uh, we will talk with you soon. And, and do join our upcoming webinars as well. We'll, we'll, we'll cover Prep Builder, uh, we'll cover Dashboard Best Practices. Um, we can begin into other topics as well. So anyway, have a great one. We will talk to you soon.